Hi, I'm Billy Lockett, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up, man? And uh, congratulations with the new release so far. A, a debut album is on the way, but I'm super excited that I recently got introduced to your music because I have been falling in love with your voice. And I don't say that too often, um, but more specifically with this most recent single, uh, Last Thing On My Mind, I've just been like, wow, this guy is incredible. Uh, your vocal tone, the piano and the lyrics just go together so beautifully. So I'm curious like what that process is like when you are in the studio and starting to work on your music. Um. Well, with the, that's a ballad. So thanks, by the way. I like that one as well. <laughs> so that's good. Um, well, I mean, with the ballads, it's delicate. Do you know what I mean? I'm starting to really um, take my time with it. And because it's just piano and vocal, it gives you more room to kind of be like, okay, well, let's record this word 20 times and get the right emotion in it. And because it's like with a song like that, or with most of my songs, the aim is to break the person's heart. That's the point, really. And you can't really, if you do that a bit, it doesn't really work. So you've really got to go for it. Do you know what I mean? So when it comes to a ballad, if it doesn't literally tear their heart in half, in my head, it's rubbish. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's pointless. There's no point in sort of slightly, you know, just nipping it. You've really got to slice it open. So I think with that that in mind every word counts and every chord counts and even the slightest sort of thing that goes in an unusual well not not too unusual because you need a bit of spice in a song to make it interesting but if any moment where it doesn't quite fit and it jars people you're going to lose them and then they're not going to cry so it's kind of like the whole process is building up to that middle eight crying moment so so it's not so much you being vulnerable it's you trying to tug at our heartstrings that's exactly what it yeah, is it's attack. It's attack mode at you yeah. <laughs> i do feel attacked when i listen to this song <laughs> good it worked then yeah <laughs> now with with this song in particular like uh i just i love that we get to you get to showcase your vocals a little more because it's a piano ballad there's no other instrumentation with it um when you are in the uh vocal booth recording the this track like where do you feel like you kind of had a sweet spot in your voice and where do you feel like you felt challenged in your voice yeah i feel like with this one it it was tough to sing this and when i first wrote it i was writing it on zoom actually for, with um one of my mates josh daniels and he um and it was tricky because he he kind of he's got a higher range than me you know and every time he sang it it was like it felt right but I guess I could easily, a lot of the time I would just bring it down a key and be like, cool, that's where it sits. But I think with this one, in, I sort of intentionally tried to push it as high as I could to kind of, you almost want your voice to break a little bit. You almost want it to be difficult to sing because then it's even more hard hitting. So um, technically this song wasn't really in my range, but maybe that's uh, maybe that's the beauty of it. You know, because you can hear the sort of the strain, <laughs> the strain of emotion. But it was actually because I couldn't quite hit the note. So, <laughs> so there was actually no pain coming out of this. <laughs> no, no, there was, there was, there was. I mean, this is the thing, like, with, and essentially as well with a lot of songs, I will do like I record the vocals in piecemeal. So I do like verse and then and then separately do the bridge and separately do the chorus and everything. You know, it'll all be in sections. But when it, when it came to this song and most of the ballads it's kind of for me it has to be a one take it has to you know and we can do hundreds of the one of one go but it can't you know i can't just do the verse and then go into the chorus it, it has to flow from beginning to end to sort of make sense so obviously you know well it is kind of like acting though in a way because you do just sort of switch in you know i'd be lying if i said i, I always felt it every time i sang it you know it's like but but you do you just fall into that that way of of feeling the words but it's kind of trigger memory after a while especially when you're touring it so many times it's hard to constantly be emotional every day you know sometimes you're quite happy you know what i mean there's nothing to be sad about that, i mean that's a good point because i've always been curious like are you like do do artists really 
go into that emotional space in every single performance. I feel like that's hard. That that's that's exhausting at the same time. Yeah, never. I mean, th- th- well, not never. A lot of the time, well, half, half the time I'd say I do go into that, space, but half the time I'm thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner after the show, or <laughs> I'm thinking maybe there's going to be some good telly on. Um, and I know that sounds mental, but I really because so, sometimes when you you do it, you've done it so many times. And then you'll have to, and then you'll hear your brain go, Billy, wake up. You've got to do a chorus now. And you're, oh yeah. And you know what I mean? Then you go back into it. <clears throat> you can't, you can't always be this, you know, heartbreaking, sad mess. I mean, if you, if I was, it would, you know, it'd be quite a sad existence, I think. As long as you're not bringing in a stand in, we're good. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That's, that's probably, I think that's album three. Yeah. Okay, got it. that makes sense. All right, <laughs> earn the right to do that. Yeah, yeah, you've settled down and everything is good to go. <laughs> when the meta takes over, and I'll be able to just sort of have my meta version of myself go out. On the <laughs> now, what is your process um, when you are thinking about what kind of sound you're going to have on this uh, on your song specifically for, especially for this one? Like, did you? come into it knowing it was going to be a ballad or is this something that that barnaby cox was like hey what if we just do it more of a ballad have more of a piano tone instead of having any other instrumentation in the track do you know what this whole album i kind of just let each song decide where it goes um and if it felt like it needed a drum beat then i put a drum then we both put a drum beat and if it didn't we didn't we kind of just didn't force anything and this song just there was just never any need for anything else. You know what I mean? And 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 we I, and I was writing it and and it was always a ballad to me from the beginning. You know, it just and I didn't actually I didn't have many ballads on the album. So it was kind of like, you know, I was thinking, God, I could do with one. And we'd actually pretty much finished the album. This was the last song I wrote after I'd pretty much done the album and I was I was sort of over it. And then we did this one at the end and everyone sort of went a bit mad for it. It wasn't even going to be a single at first either, you know, and then and it just has ended up. I played it to one of my mates, and and she was blown away by it. And I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I've missed a trick here. So, and now it's going on to be one of my most success. Well, probably the most successful thing I've I've ever done. So it's quite good that she listened to it. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be a hard act to follow, though. Oh, look at you! <laughs> that's the second one. The second one. This is brilliant. Yeah, it is though. You're right. The sense is right. Yeah, it is a hard act to follow. But um, and the the thing is with that song, hard act to follow. That's been like my my most successful, biggest song for so long now. Maybe like well, so long, about four or five years, and I haven't been able to really write anything that one did did successfully well, and two that I liked as much. And and this, sorry, that's not me snoring. My dogs in the background. <laughs> But, it was a stand-in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so th- yeah, this one is the first. Yeah, since then, I was thinking, oh God, have I have I lost it? Do you know what I mean? Have I got another killer ballad in me? Because I just kept trying to find one, and this is it. This I know this is it. This is the one. <laughs> I, I almost think this might be even better than Hard Act Follow, but you can't compare a sheep to a cow. That's true. That's very true. It might seem or look like a horse. Who knows? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, 12 tracks on this on this upcoming debut album, uh, Abington Grove. What is it about these 12 tracks that you felt like made it a cohesive body of work? And um, the fact that this song uh, came out after, you know, was the last song to kind of add to the album. Did it have any kind of impact or did it make you want to switch around the track listing because you were adding another track? Yeah, I mean, it was it made me think god i need maybe i need some more ballads on this album but um at the same time the sound of the album is is a mixture of songs i've written over the last 10 years i'm 31 now and this is my first album um and I, and it's it's taken me a long time to say the least really because i started really i got signed the first time when i was 19 and then i got signed again when i was 24 and every single time we we never got a chance to release the album, I'd always get dropped just before the album came out. And so it's been in a weird way a blessing in disguise because it mean I've means I've collected, you know, hundreds and hundreds of songs over the last 12 years. And um and so these are the 
in my opinion, these are the 12 best that I've ever done. So if this doesn't work, you know, I've got nothing left. I can literally, I've thrown everything at this. So in terms of the production wise, I've always been, I think that's been one, been one big thing that's let me down through throughout my whole career and my life is not being able to find a producer that could make me sound good like everyone would, would always say oh you sound so much better live thinking it was a compliment but it was actually to me it was like god i need to find that producer and i need to find a guy that can make me sound how i want it to be and it was never right it was never right no matter who i worked with and uh, and barney was the was the missing piece really so as soon as i met him i just wanted to make music constantly so so i think a good cohesive sound through it is the fact that we made it together you know over the over the space of about a year it took us pretty much almost every week for a year doing a couple of songs, trying things out, just what just working in the cellar. I mean, it wasn't actually this cellar. This isn't this is a new cellar, but it was in my old cellar, which looked basically the same. It's the same stuff. And we just sat in here and just made music. It was it was genuinely the best year of my life. And I I, I can't I sad that it's over, you know, because I I feel a little lost that, that I'm not working anymore. Um, but I love it so much, man. I, I love I love this album so much, and I've even if it doesn't do anything, I'm I'm just so proud that I made it. You know, it's I mean, it's a it's it's a long time in the making, and and the fact that it's finally going to see the light, and you know, more fans yeah. are going to get to more music fans are going to get introduced to your music which is incredible um going back to barney um what was that first experience like when you got into the studio with him and and how do you feel that he allowed you to sound like you do live but this time recorded so instantly it was it was easy you know what i mean it was like i i just i brought him a song I sort of challenged him because I was kind of a bit sick of being put with producers that I didn't want to work with and it didn't click. So I was kind of with, with him, no offense to him, but I was just like, here we go again. Do you know what I mean? So I know I'll give him the hardest song that I've been working on for about a year and I can't get right. And there's about 20 different versions. I'll just give that to him, see if he can sort it. And he was like, yeah, it's just this. And then just sort of did it. And I was like, oh yeah, that's so obvious. And, and just every single thing that we, that he touches sounds nice. It sounds nice, you know. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's so hard to find someone that can can make everything sound nice instantly. Normally with producers, it sounds really crap for about, you know, two or three days, and then it starts to take shape. Whereas with Barney, it's like we make everything sound nice from the beginning. So that when we're recording in, like the vo my vocal mix in my headphones is just like unbelievable. I can't believe it. You know, I even got to the point where I was like, I was giving him average songs and being like, there you go. You know, see if you can make that good. You know, and just think, and he would. And some of them on the album, do you know what I mean? Some songs I was like, this is average as hell. And then and then he would just nail it. And now it's, and some of them are singles, you know. And so a, a producer, finding the right producer is as important as finding the right manager. I think those two things, if you've got those two things right, you can be pretty unstoppable. It'll just take time. But though they're the most important things, I think, with with any artist. Yeah. It's also very important finding the right collaboration if you're trying to put collaborations into your record. Uh, with this album, you had Gold Link uh, with Hard Act to Follow. So what was it about Gold Link that you felt was the appropriate artist to bring on board to your debut album and and more specifically with this song? Well, I mean, Gold Link's a really nice guy, you know, really, really. And I feel like he's quite classy and respectable as well. And like, there's just something about it, the way, the way he raps is, is different. You know, there's something soulful and emotional about it, you know? And I was thinking when it comes to like, you know, having a rapper on on um, on a ballad, and it was my most well known ballad as well. So it it had to be almost sang in a way, you know. And Gold Link is really great at doing that, you know, because he has no barriers to his music. You know, he'll sing and then he'll rap and then he'll do some spoken word and then he'll just it, it, it's I I just, I just love his albums and and you know and I liked the fact that when I said to you know when I said to him, is he up for doing this? he wanted to sort of hang out and meet me before, 
you know, and get to know me. And I thought like, oh, that's really cool. Like that it isn't just a kind of just an email. Because there's so many times these days where you make music with someone, you never even speak to them. You just get sent an MP3, you sing on it and send it back. So, you know, I went to a hotel in London and we just sat and had a cup of tea with him for like, Oh, that's so English, isn't it? But that's what happened. <laughs> and uh, uh, we just sat there for like five or six hours just chatting. And it was weird because we've had, we've just come from such different worlds, you know. And uh, and there was just so many things that I was talking about that he had no idea about. Like, I used to be a, a semi professional snooker player. So I was telling him about that. And he hadn't even heard of this. Have you heard of that? Sport? I've never heard of that. American. You, 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 you said it, and I thought of the chocolate bar Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. snooker you've never heard of snooker i've never heard of that oh it's a great game you know have you heard of ronnie o'sullivan surely you've heard of ronnie o'sullivan i can't say i have now i'm disappointing you you're about to leave me it's like pool you know pool N- no yeah you know, i'm like- just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well it's like that but on a massive table anyway whatever it's really oh boring, shoot but- yeah, but it's it's a really good sport, and I was uh, and I was telling him about it, and I was just thinking, God, my life's weird right now. <laughs> yeah, we just clicked, man, and and I, I'd say we're friends now, which is good. Um, and he, and as soon as he sent it back, it was like that's perfect because I said to him, "What are you going to do with the track?" And he's like, "I don't know." And I was kind of like, "Great." I, I, it wasn't like, "Oh, I think you should do this and you should do that." It was just like, just do whatever feels right, and and it does, and it's really lifted it. I think I, I love I love what he's done. Nice. Well, I love what you have done so far with the music you've released. Uh, I love this collaboration with with Barnaby Cox that you have going on. And I'm excited for this upcoming debut album. As as we both mentioned, it's a long time in the making. So uh, February 17th, 2023 cannot come any sooner. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Congratulations with the success of your single so far. And how excited are you for Abington Grove to drop? I... I've never been so excited about anything in my life. I've been waiting for this for my whole life. This is the biggest, this is the biggest thing. What a sad life. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. Oh God, I need to, I need to walk up, walk up a mountain or something. I, mean, I need to do some actual proper things, but yeah, sadly, this is the best thing that's ever happened. So that's how excited I am. Not in a bad way, but just more in terms of like, as a human being, I probably should have more things to be excited about. You know what I mean? <laughs> I get still, you. I get you completely. But yes, yeah. I would be excited too if this was my album. Yeah. The only worry <laughs> is you only get one album, don't you? You only get one debut album. So um, it's, I'm also terrified, If you know, if I'm honest. It's, it is a scary thing, isn't it? Because you're, you're really putting your heart neck on the line there with everything. EPs, you can kind of get away with them not doing so well. <laughs> anyway, sorry. We're done. No, we? we're you're good. I mean, <laughs> there's there's great traction with the music you've released so far. So I I am not worried for you. So you shouldn't be worried either. Just make I'm sure that once this drops, there's a tour and we get to see you live in LA. So that's all I'm looking forward to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, my visa's approved. I've got it now. So I'm ready. I'm just... Uh, waiting for the dates but yeah Perfect. that's definitely happening well when that time comes we'll definitely reunite so billy thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and um yeah i i can't wait for this album to drop thanks man cheers